Shane Robbins, new superintendent of Kershaw County Schools. I've been on the job approximately three months and for those of you who don't know me, I'm coming from Indiana and I've been a superintendent for 10 years. So this makes my 11th year as a superintendent. Um, I think it's important you know, for people um, to know that I'm, I'm married and have a, a very supportive wife who was excited about the opportunity for us to come to South Carolina. Uh, we have two boys. I have a junior in college who is an elementary ed major and a junior in high school who's attending Lugoff Elgin High School. Uh, this time of year in October, Indiana is getting cold. Mm -hmm. And so we've been talking to Bryce, our junior in college, who is still in Indiana. I'm kind of rubbing it in his face about the weather down here and the weather he's experiencing. So uh, that's been that's been pretty nice. Um, it's been a challenge, though, you know, knowing he's not quite as close to, to us as what we're used to. But, um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I did bring my parents with me, um, which, again, for those of you who don't know me, um, it's been an exciting adventure to have my parents move down to South Carolina. They're integrating into the community. I know I've shared with many in our office um, that my mother has been a part of a quilting club, something she's never done, and so she's really enjoying that. And you know, they're part of the Silver Sneakers program at the Fitness Zone, and so yeah, just really becoming, trying to become a part of the community, and it's been a fun, you know, start to a new adventure for us. Very, very appropriate question. Um, I was at the football game at North Central Friday night, and I had never heard of shrimp and grits until I started coming to South Carolina about a year and a half ago. Have ne and I'll eat. I'll try anything. I have never gotten myself the confidence to try shrimp and grits, but we had a wonderful chef at the game that was uh, cooking as a fundraiser for the band. I thought, all right. I'm going to do it. So I had shrimp and grits. That's new for me. Uh, fried okra is new for me. Of course, I, I'm a big barbecue guy, so okay. I've eaten a lot of barbecue. But the shrimp and grits was probably the biggest. I loved it. Oh, it was so good. So, um, yeah, it's breaking in. I have to make sure that I tell people unsweet tea <laughs> right. when I drink tea. Um, not that I don't like sweet tea. I love sweet tea. But my waistline doesn't. <laughs> so. You know, of course, I use social media. I use social media a lot. You know, I like to use social media um, more as a celebration to the things going on in our schools, pictures of students, and just to communicate the things that are taking place in the school district. I, I liked the um, podcast, you know, but I think there's something to be said. Um, with a visual that goes along with it, you know, for parents, you know, we'll have hopefully guests on here occasionally mm -hmm. that will sit here with me. So it's not just, you know, Dr. Robin speaking all the time. It's other people that have a, a big influence on what's taking place in our district. It's going to be a way to recognize people and celebrate the successes that we're experiencing. Could be a staff member, could be a student, could be a community member. Uh, and I just think the more different, you know, modes that we use, um, to push out to families and communicate um, the better you know knowledge base that we have of the things we're trying to accomplish in the district. So we'll leave no stone unturned on ways to try to communicate. We've been blessed to be able to initiate e-learning in two other districts in Indiana. Indiana has inclement weather uh, and so we were looking to use our technology tools for flexibility. Um, and it has been, you know, just a, a nice tool in the toolbox, so to speak. So when I came to South Carolina, this is the first year that South Carolina has offered that as an opportunity for school districts. And they chose five pilot school districts. Um, I applied for it for Kershaw County, knowing that we had a lot of technology experience, infrastructure and background already in place. Uh, and then with my experience of using e-learning, I thought we would be a great candidate um, to be one of the pilot schools. We were chosen. We're, one, we're the only district that's not in the upstate that is part of the pilot school district program. And so um, what I did find out um, after the process had started, South Carolina is actually modeling their program after Indiana's program. So, you know, there's a lot of eyes on us to see how we're, we're going to do this. But, you know, anytime you do something um, different, 
you try to make it a little bit better. So I'm trying to bring my experiences from two different districts in Indiana to Kershaw County and then take it a step further. And we, we're already making some strides that we weren't doing in Indiana that's going to make this easier on parents and, and families. So the natural question is why e-learning? Um, you know, inclement weather strikes and we have to make those days up. And if we can if we can provide continuity of instruction during that time and not have to make those days up, I think that's a win for the, for the school and it's a win for families. So they can look at a school calendar and they can say, all right, if that's a scheduled day off, that's a scheduled day off. Um, some of the intricacies that uh, are involved in e-learning will be connectivity. We know we won't have 100% connectivity, but one of the things that we're doing is working through those challenges to try to minimize that. Uh, when teachers learn how to lesson plan, students will simply download those lessons onto their um, device and they will complete those lessons if we have to cancel school. Once they have Wi-Fi connectivity again, which might not be uh, until they're back in school, they'll upload those assignments and you know that's one way that we can try to overcome the connectivity issues. The other thing we're doing is trying to partner with as many businesses in the county as possible to serve as public Wi-Fi spots um, for our children. Again, if it's real inclement weather, we don't want them out on the roads, obviously, to get um, to a Wi-Fi spot. We're going to use buses as mobile hotspots as well. And so those are all ways to try to minimize that connectivity gap. Um, we're not stopping there. We'll keep researching and working with um, internet providers to see what we can do, especially in the northern part of the county. And again, I've only been here since July, but I, I've been up in the northern part of the county quite a bit, and there are some serious um, gaps in connectivity, even if you have Wi-Fi. Um, it's just there's not as many towers up there, and so we're going to try to work through some of those challenges. Yeah, you know, before we get home where the kids are completely away from teachers, uh, we want to experience what an e-learning day feels like. And again, just lessons learned in my first experience with this. Sometimes we over plan because teachers do provide a lot of direct feedback to students. And so when we over plan, then they can't get through their assignments. And um, we, we want to make sure that we're prepared for what it feels like to use a virtual environment for students to complete their assignments and then have just sparse you know, responses from teachers based on what we call virtual classroom hours. I can tell you just um, from past experiences and you know, seeing what other districts have done, you know, we don't want these to be filler assignments. You know, cookie cutter lessons that we create today but we may not use for three months. We want them to be relevant we want them to be on track with our pacing guides on where we are in our curriculum and so therefore they're meaningful. But they can be shorter uh, to help us at least address content and standards that teachers would be um, typically addressing at that current time. And, and at the end of the day, one of the things that we're hoping this helps us do, it helps keep students pacing um, and preparing for the SC Ready and SC Pass assessments or the end of course assessments that they're going to take at the end of the year. We want to make it fun, you know. We, you know, as long as this remains a novelty, um, I what I have experienced is kids really buy into it, they enjoy it, and they work hard. Teachers do the same thing, and so on the mock e-learning day, we'll encourage kids to come to. Um, come to school in dress code appropriate, pajamas, slippers, teachers will do the same thing. Um, it won't be the full day, it'll be just a portion of the day. We'll flip classes around so it's an unfamiliar environment and then the teachers will be communicating through you know, Google Chat, Google Hangout um, technology that we have in the district to experience what it's like for them to go through and complete their assignments without somebody standing in front of them to be able to ask the question. And so they'll, it'll be very quiet during that period of time because we want to act like we're working in a virtual environment. You know, we'll invite the media in to come and observe it so they can see how a teacher would communicate um, with a student. Now, leading up to that, there's a lot of work that's taken place. You know, one of the things that we were um, able to do is hire somebody that's going to provide professional development to our staff. Dr. Isti Stanga has been working in this environment for 20 plus years. And so he's been out in the buildings 
working with teachers. Um, we've identified technology integration specialists who are teachers in every one of our buildings to do a um, train the trainer type of model, help teachers that aren't familiar with working in this environment, what it looks and feels like to use Google Classroom and create lessons for their students. Absolutely, we have created a very nice link on our website that has really pretty much anything and everything you'd want to know about e-learning and what the state is somewhat um, prescribing for us to use. Um, frequently asked questions, you know, we, it'll be an evolving thing, but where our hotspot points will be in the county. Um, there'll be several other, you know, just little items and information. We're going to have a technology um, help hotline. It'll be just like calling in a hotline where um, if you have a problem connecting, you can call the technology department and they can guide you through steps on trying to you know, correct some of those things, trying to supply as many support measures as possible. And then also give parents a little kind of look-see of what it may feel like you know, this first time before they you know, experience it. Um, we're going to hold or host parent sessions. Uh, where Dr. Sango will be present to help answer questions as well, um, just to kind of, you know, alleviate some of the anxiety. It really is a fun, good um, opportunity for our students, and we hope not to use it that much. You know, we hope and pray that we have great weather. But you know what? I've been in South Carolina for three months, and I've had two hurricane <laughs> situations already. So um, where we could have used those days, we didn't use them because in, in my opinion we weren't ready and we want the first experience to be a good one for our families and for our students and for our staff. Exactly. You know, um, the achievement, this is all, everything we really try to focus on is to focus on real world um, opportunities for students and achievement, you know, boosting student achievement. So we have looked closely at our student achievement data and um, we always know there's room for growth. Always will be room for growth. And so we want to see what our technology initiatives, not just e-learning, but as we try to flip classrooms and look at a 21st century learning environment, how it has a significant impact on students. Because at the end of the day, one of the things that we know is a driver in that is student engagement. Mm -hmm. And so we are trying to find any means and mode you know, available to us to engage students in the learning process. You know, and we also want to give them a voice and let them advocate, you know, for what they want to see in their classroom. And um, if we're going to preach and teach continuous learning, then as the leaders in the district, we have to be willing to do those same things. Yeah, absolutely. I just think that people need to look for some neat, exciting things that are going to take place in the district. You know, I shared with our staff, and, and you were there, um, I like to lead not follow and we've got a great staff that I think is up for the challenge because if we're doing those things that means we're providing uh, cutting edge opportunities for our students and that's my goal is for our district to continue to do that um, but at the same time making sure that we're keeping a, a mindful watch of how we're spending resources and make sure we're spending it on kids and in the classroom the best we can so that may mean that we'll have initiatives that aren't instructional based that are designed to help us um, save money in the non-instructional avenues that are required to operate a school district so that we can then push that money into the classroom to do some neat programs and, and um, to compensate our staff. Stay tuned and I hope people will watch um, the video cast and uh, we'll try to give as much positive information as we can.